Hello, good morning. Um, so this morning, before we were starting, like I was glancing through the speakers, discussants, and panelists, and, and I must tell you, I have never felt as insecure not having a doctor before my name until today. Uh, but I guess I'm here to provide a different kind of perspective. Um, so just a quick background. Uh, I've only had two jobs in my life. The first really was um, right after uh, college and fellow blue, uh, Dr. Shell here. Uh, I went to work for a multinational fast-moving consumer goods company. And seven years after that, um, started a social enterprise, co-founded it, called Happy Noi, which I'd be more than happy to talk about. I think I have a few slides. And perhaps the perspective I could have, uh, Dr. Maria, is maybe a view from the, from the ground. So, uh, Happy Noi, essentially, we're a social enterprise, and our aspiration is to help Sari Sari store owners grow their business. Now, so, since we're an international crowd, for Indonesia, these would be our warungs. For India, this would be Karanas. But anywhere in emerging economies, you'll find them. Micro-retailers selling sachets. Unfortunately, it continues to be a problem, Dr. Shell. We are looking at, into it. Um, and how we help them really grow their business really would be uh, by becoming a platform and a bridge uh, across different spectrums. No? First is really capacity building and upskilling, access, access to finance, technology enablement, and really access to peer support and community. Um, since we've been founded 2007, we've actually had an outreach of more than 150,000 stores to date. Next slide, please. Um, next slide. Oh, oh, sorry. There. Uh, yeah, so I guess just these are just our programs. But what's interesting is, I guess, the people in the room have a global perspective, I guess a development path for countries and the globe. Um, in Happy Noi, working with these kind of small shops, we have our own version. And in fact, we call it the path to prosperity. Uh, how can we help? really micro stores, micro small stores, go along that development path uh, and go from micro to small to medium. And this is actually a funnel uh, because as we know, 90% right now, 90, 95% of the stores are here on the, on the left side, no? what we call window type or bintana stores. No? They, on average, they, they sell probably around 15 to 20 US dollars a day at most. Um, and that would be the gross revenue. And when we break down this path to prosperity for Happy Noi, and I'm happy I can bring out the slide. I normally can't bring this out, but I think I'm in good company today. Uh, it's a busy slide, but I guess what I wanted to react to Dr. Maria is when we looked at how to help these small uh, retailers grow. They grow along this uh, axis where we've identified barriers to growth at different stages, uh, and we've identified essentially steps of Fixing the foundation, addressing the basics, uh, identifying growth opportunities, and then helping them diversify and innovate on in their business. And increasingly, increasingly, uh, really focusing on helping the stores achieve business resiliency. And this includes resiliency to climate change. And when we look at our basket of interventions or programs, these actually cut across uh, access to microfinance, upskilling and capacity building, and the new business diversification. And when I read through your presentation, uh, little did I know that um, we were following the model of the three I's, actually. And so it starts really with investment, which is really the access to capital and microfinance. Then a lot of the stores, they wonder, actually, sorry, backtrack. A lot of the stores, if you ask them, how can you, how can you grow your business? Uh, what, what's the m number one thing you need? Puhunan, that's Filipino for capital. Okay, and then we have a lot of financing partners offering them loans, formal loans. Only less than 25% will apply. If it's a formal loan, they would much rather go to the informal lenders. And so there is that fear, naturally, of more formal uh, financing uh, institutions. And so the second part, which I would call the infusion part, is really the the increase in the know-how and capacity building to not be afraid of that. In fact, it's a better kind of financing, as well as improving their store operations. So this is the stage that we're talking now about, the infusion part. But to be honest, there are 1.3, 1.4 million Sari Sari stores in the Philippines. They are a dime a dozen, and we'll go into that a lot more later. If they are to grow, 
there has to be the third eye, which is really the innovation. And that's why on this path you will see identifying the growth opportunities and the business diversification. Because there has to be a level of digitalization and specialization across the stores. And let me be the first to say that not all of them will make it. And it will be Darwinian, it will be Cambrian. Um, and so I guess I just want to circle back and going back to my initial question, why am I here? And when I look at all these macro statistics, I just want to end maybe with a simple story. So our field people, we actually call them happy noise store doctors. And uh, because our, our, that's how we sort of like want to see ourselves, which is how to help diagnose and help provide good recommendations. But ultimately, it's still the store owner who decides if they want to take that vitamin or medicine. But uh, when we were starting around 2008, and I guess for a lot of you economists in the, in the, in the room, you will know what, something that happened around that time, uh, the global financial crisis. And so one of our store doctors was reporting one of our highest selling stores in Batangas, never forget it, suddenly reported literally almost overnight her sales plummeted. And she was one of the largest stores. If I was talking about 15 to $20 a day, she was doing upwards of 400, 500 US dollars a day. And in a span of a week, I kid you not, plummeted to less than $30 a day. And so we, we don't know what happened, right? And, and of course, our store doctor, being a store doctor, had to dig. And the sales went down, but there was a chain. Uh, the people who were buying from her were no longer buying. And when our store doctor start, became a happiness store detective, found out that that chain, if you follow it ultimately, was rooted to a factory closing nearby. So the factory had workers who had households living there. And that was really because of the global financial crisis, which forced that factory to close. So a lot of these macroeconomic discussions on the ground really redound to these very practical things that will be felt by a store owner. Because when the economy slows down or when the economic contractions happen, and large firms close like this factory, it is felt by store owners on the ground. So yeah, happy to get into that a little bit later. Thank you very much. Mark, just very quickly, what happened to the outperformer from Batangas? How are they doing? Oh yeah, so, so this was in 2008. Uh, and so thankfully, we helped her diversify a little bit. So we uh, enabled her to go sub-distribution, which is essentially equipping her with a small tricycle so her market could expand. But uh, really funny story. Her name is Tita Jenny. Um, her, her, her mother was married to an, got married to an American veteran, then they moved abroad, which is another development path for Filipinos. There you have it, connecting the dots.